Okay, I'd like to call the village board for Tuesday, January 23rd to order, please. Roll call. Trustee Allison Williams. Present. Trustee Paul. Here. Trustee Zerbel. Here. Trustee Mark Williams. Here. Trustee Bukowski. Here. Trustee Melcheski. Here. President Kardowski. Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. And please remember all of our men and women throughout the world. Okay, do we have any changes to the agenda? No changes, Madam President. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Number five, action on open and closed minutes from December 19th, 2017. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to accept those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Number six, oath of office for the, our two new public safety officers. Chief. At this time, I'd like uh, public safety officer White Besseth and Public Safety Officer Benjamin Walker, come forward, please. Give you a quick introduction of our two newest officers. Public Safety, Public Safety Officer White Veseth. Um, officer White Veseth was hired on June 5th, 2017. Prior to joining us, White worked for the St. Norbert College as a professional campus security officer. He's a graduate of St. Norbert College uh, with a bachelor's degree in psychology and a minor in Spanish. White graduated in May from the NVTC Police Academy. Public Safety Officer Benjamin Walker. Officer Benjamin Walker was hired in September 18th, 2017. Ben previously worked full-time as a police officer with the City of Green Bay. And prior to that, he was a um, Wisconsin Department of Administ Administration Capitol Police in Madison. At this time, we'll be um, um, doing the oath of office. Raise your right hand. Recite the oath, please. At this time, I ask uh, invest Investigator Bob Messer from the Schwann Public Safety Department as he'll do the pinning for Public Safety Officer Wyatt Besseth. I do it like the Marines, just put that baby on her. <laughs> I don't think they do that anymore. And I ask um, Katie Walker, the wife of, of Benjamin Walker, come forward, please. There you go. Good luck, guys. Congratulations. Uh, welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Number seven, comments from the public must be limited to items not on the agenda. Do we have any public that would like to speak on items not on tonight's agenda? Anybody wishing to speak on items not on tonight's agenda? Okay, moving forward. Written communications and or announcements. 
I had one email. That was it on the uh, Marcus Theaters. Okay. Um, this is the time that I'm going to say. I got a uh, phone call today. I was actually in my office once today from all the meetings that we had, and I and I was able to get one phone call, and a lady called, and she just wanted to say that she wanted to tell me how great our public works department was because our roads were great and she didn't have to worry about sliding all over the place because they had put a very a good amount of salt on our roads and not everybody's roads were as good as ours. So wow. kudos to our public works department, Doug. Take Thanks. a ball. Okay, number nine, action on consent agenda, which is request to approve operator's license, review department reports, and budgeted expenditures. Does anybody want anything pulled? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve those. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Number 10, public hearings, 10-1. Public hearing on resolution number R1-1-18 regarding the vacation of a portion of William Charles Court located in the village of Ashwabna in Brown County, Wisconsin. Is there anybody here that would like to speak for or against this? Okay. We have nobody for or against this item. Move to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close that public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. 10-2, public hearing on ordinance number 01-2-18. Rezoning parcel number VA-178-14 from Community Business District B3 to Special Business District SB. Located at 2760 South Oneida in the village of Ashwabna in Brown County, Wisconsin. Anybody like to speak for or against this item? <clears throat> Anybody like to speak for or against this item? Okay. Move to close hearing. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to close that hearing. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. What am I looking at? Motion carried. 10 3. Public hearing regarding ordinance number 01 1 18, rezoning parcel VA 56 41. Excuse me. VA 56 4 1 from Light Industry District. L1 to Sports and Entertainment District SE. Anybody in this area in here would like to speak for or against this public hearing? Anybody like to speak at this public hearing? Okay. Move to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. The hearings are closed. Okay. Number 11, <coughs> 11A, action on resolution number R1-1-18 regarding the vacation of a portion of William Charles Court located in the village of Ashwabna in Brown County, Wisconsin. Todd. Uh, yes, it, as you see by the attachment, this is the bulb of the cul-de-sac of William Charles Court. Uh, it's actually to be vacated. As you're aware, the Slindy development that's uh, moving forward will be actually for apartments there. The road will actually turn and head south to uh, Marvell, so it will not be a, a dead end anymore. So, but the Baldwin cul-de-sac needs to be vacated to allow for that development. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution number R1-1-18. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 11B, action on ordinance number 01-2-18, rezoning parcel number VA-178-14 from Community Business District 3 to Business <coughs> District, to Special Business District SB, located at 2760 South Oneida Street in the village of Ashwabna in Brown County, Wisconsin. Cut. Uh, as you see in the attached packet, so this is the uh, heart, the current Hardee's. I should say it's actually right now vacant. Um, it is the Hardee's store in the corner of, I think it's Phoenix Way and South Nevada Street. As part of that, the Shell Station next door is actually going to be uh, enlarging, I guess, the redeveloping there. 
they would like to combine both parcels, build a new uh, convenience store, gas station, uh, with filling at that location, and the Hardee's will be actually built into the new building. So it will be a convenience store, filling station, along with uh, the new Hardee's uh, fast food restaurant. In order to do that, in order to combine that, we do have to, the gas station will be located on this new parcel, so therefore we do have to rezone it to special business. Okay. Move to approve ordinance 01-2-18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 01-2-18. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. 11C, action on ordinance number 01-1-18. Rezoning parcel VA-56-4-1 from Light Industry District L1 to Sports Entertainment District SE. Aaron. The uh, requested <coughs> rezoning is for the 2.5 acre village owned parcel on the south side of Mike McCarthy Way. The request is to rezone the property from Light Industrial I1 to Sports Entertainment SE to facilitate the development of a <coughs> Uh, six-story, 92-room comfort suites hotel on the site. Uh, the developer is in the audience if you have any questions specifically for him. Otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions you would have. Move to approve the ordinance 01-1-18. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 01-1-18. All those in oh, favor? Uh, Mary, I well, just want to make a comment here real quick. Okay. Um, basically, we're, I just want everybody to know, even that's out there, these items, we're going through them fairly quickly. They're big items. They're things that are happening in the village of Ashwaubenon. But this isn't the first time that we've talked about it. We've talked about this, these last several things, quite a bit uh, over the last year uh, in a lot of cases. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows it's not just a a one thing, one time deal that we don't, we know, that we know about what's happening here. Right. That, well, that, that's part of why I was only in my office for one phone call today because right. of all the meetings that we've had. Yes. I shouldn't go through these quite so quick all the time because I, I've dealt with these things that we as a board have dealt with these things for well over a year. So yes, we are, um, we're approving them, but we have seen them over and over and over. So. I think Mark makes a great, great point. Thank you for, for doing that. These these things are are well vetted, not just at this yes at All this the, meeting, but uh, at a lot of committee meetings yeah. and other discussions. Good yes. good point, Mark. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 01-1-18. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. 11D, request to approve development agreement with the Wawurka Group Bohemian Park for parcel VA-67-A-2. Tony. All right, attached as part of the packet is a copy of the development agreement that has been uh, agreed to uh, as far as form and, and language. Essentially what that is is the final piece of uh, finalizing what, as was indicated, is the uh, Bohemian Park, also known as the United Development, uh, located here on the corner of Holmgren Way and Morris Avenue. Uh, essentially, the terms of the development agreement uh, indicate that there will be tax increment financing provided in a pay-as-you-go uh, format, where the developer will be based uh, will be um, provided tax incentive based upon the actual increment that they created, and. There, are, there will be four buildings constructed on the site uh, with no less than 50 residential units in each building. Uh, the first building, uh, which is also known as Building 3, uh, which will be constructed on Holmgren Way first, uh, will have a little bit of a proposal for a front-loaded tax increment financing of 75% of the increment created for the first five years and then 40% of the increment created for the remaining five years. Uh, so the proposal is essentially uh, for a period of 10 years, uh, which is split between five and five, and then the remaining three buildings will be 50% of the tax increment for a 10-year period for each building. Uh, and then the last essential term is that uh, the developer shall obtain a certificate of occupancy for any of those buildings to receive the tax increment fin financing no later than December 31st of 2031. 
Uh, so the uh, development agreement that is contained in the packet reflects uh, those terms. Can't we get a different name? I'm just kidding. We work. -a? Where did that come from? That th That's the group. Oh, for the developer? Yes. So we're probably not going to change that. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a W-2 program. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you certainly <laughs> didn't want that one. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Oh. Well, good work, Tony. That's good work. Move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the development agreement with the Wawerka Group. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 11, 11E, request to approve development agreement with Village Center LLC. Allison. It says Allison you, yeah. up here. We're just trying to throw you off. It's really Tony. <laughs> The two of you together. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say we can we can take team. Essentially, uh, this is a copy of or a copy has been provided uh, uh, on your desk here this evening of the development agreement that has been now agreed to with Village Center LLC, which is also known as the Slindy Development, located over at William Charles Court. Uh, they also don't want the name of Lusky. We tried, but there's no one here from We Work, by the way, is there? Oh, okay, I'm safe. You change the names on them enough. I mean, this one changed from, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm used to United on the other one. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. This Sorry. one will actually, um, we believe, be named The Element. But their LLC name is Village Center LLC. Yeah. Just to further confuse you. Yeah. yeah. So essentially the terms and conditions of this uh, will be 3.5 million of tax increment to be provided to the developer uh, with a specified payment schedule uh, that is, um, I think goes out to 2041, if I recall correctly. Um, but the specific payments uh, as far as the guarantee that the, uh, the developer's principals uh, have made their um, will be essentially be making that payment to repay the the TIF loan in the amount of 3.5 million dollars. Uh, there, this is again a five or proposed five building project located over by William Charles Court uh, that will start with buildings uh, one and two, one along Marvell Lane, and then the newly created road uh, that will run north and south from what is now William Charles Court and connect with Marvell Lane. Uh, there'll be building two will be just north of building one on Marvell. Uh, so those mm -hmm. should be uh, or are proposed to begin construction so. uh, by April 1st of this year uh, and then to be completed construction by December 31st of 2019. And then uh, the developer will have options to develop <coughs> buildings three, four, and five uh, over the next uh, few period of years after that. Um, this will be, I believe, approximately about 350 units with all, all five proposed buildings uh, to, again, provide additional housing uh, here in the village. Tony, one question I have is uh, uh, this projected a 3.5 million TIF incentive. The last one is a percentage of increment. How do they compare? Uh, the... The one that we just uh, considered is a pay-as-you-go, uh, so that will be based upon the actual increment that's created and then calculated on an, on an annual basis, and then the payment will be made to the developer. But as the projections go, I guess, are they similar? Yes, I mean, in a sense of as far as, um, well, Overall, they, they are in the sense that there's assessed value that's been projected and, and used to kind of project what the value we believe the value will be into the future uh, and what will be supported by the, by the TIF. Overall, we have a greater financial contribution into um, the element than we do the United um, Bohemian Park project in part because we had acquired this land and we were invested in trying to solve a problem here. And then the other project came later, um, and as we kind of talked through it and just trying to moderate um, 
the apartments coming online and trying to pace ourselves. Um, it was a discussion we had with the board and trying to moderate that, that amount going forward um, in trying to solve the problem we had over here. Okay. No? Uh, I've, I've heard this, as some of you have also heard many times in committee meetings, between the two apartment developments, what is approximately going to be the assessed value in that area for the two? Um, just these two buildings projected projected uh, will be over 16 million um, their increment is 14.6 million but we have almost two million dollars in uh, tax base that's our that was already there that would be taken into consideration so but when all nine buildings get done when will all nine no no when, when they're all oh, when, when all, all nine, nine, are, nine done. are done the projected isn't it like in excess of 40. Right. Yeah. So but do some math. just to give you a little bit of a and just to note in terms of this. So the, the first development agreement you just approved that was an approval for all four buildings going forward that sets that in, in motion and you won't see that again. Their incentive is the, to just get their buildings going and get the value up that they, obviously more helpful for them in terms of the remaining of the TIF life there, which there is considerable. Um, in this particular one, we are approving the TIF and the setup for the first two buildings, which have already gone through site plan. The next three buildings, though, would come back to you um, each time uh, for a new financial discussion. This does not uh, bind us in any way in terms of what our financial um, assistance would be for the next three buildings. Right. OK. So we have a motion and a second to. Uh, actually, I don't have oh, a motion. We don't have a motion. No. We have a motion to. I'll move to approve the request for the development agreement for the Village of uh, Center. Also, I'd like to add that this has been an ongoing thing for a number of months, too, so that the public knows this is the, something we're not pushing through. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve <coughs> the development agreement with Village Center LLC. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 11F, action on Class B beer, Class C wine license for Duval Properties, LLC, DBA, press start record. Uh, before you, uh, Mr. Wayne Duval is here. He and his wife uh, recently closed uh, Future Fitness Plus located at 830 Van and Perrin Way. And they have come up with a new entertainment business venture which would require a, a Class B beer and Class C wine. And Mr. Duvall is here to uh, take any questions for you to, uh, in regard to their concept. Okay. You like, Wayne, if you'd like to step up. I would. Well, just so you're aware, the Public Works and Protection Committee took a look at this and uh, this gentleman was here with, I think one of your, your partners was with you last time, no? No, just, just okay. Him. And uh, that's right, you were, you were, yeah, you were alone. Anyway, we took a look at this, and uh, it looks like something is very interesting, but he, he can certainly say it better than I can, so. Um, yeah, we traveled, my wife and I traveled around the country, and we've done a lot of research on this. It, once again, this is ongoing over a year, too, not just, you know, in the last month or whatever, but um, after 21 years of what we were doing, selling fitness equipment, hot tub things, it was time to do something fun now. You know, as we're getting older, it's time to do something fun. Because um, it's like being a surgeon. When you deliver a $4,000 treadmill, it better be perfect every single time. <laughs> and that's a young man's game. So um, we've talked to a lot of kids, or not kids, but 21 to 40 years old around the country. So it wasn't just regional here. And we asked them about the concept and we interviewed over 200 people and they all said it was a great concept and they'd all embrace it. And then after that we asked if there was no beer, would you revisit? And over 75% said no. They'd come to, out of curiosity to check it out, but in that age group, a lot of them were saying too that finally something fun that we can do you know instead of just sitting in a bar and drinking there's you know we have all kinds of games tournaments prizes 
and it's ongoing all the time. And we also have family, family day um, where there will be no alcohol served. Um, just so you know, I don't drink either. Um, so I guess any questions or recommendations? These other facilities that you visited, what sort of population base did these communities have? They were all real large cities like Nashville, Tennessee, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tampa, Florida, okay. um, Memphis, Tennessee, Madison, Wisconsin, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, you done, Mike? A uh, question I have, uh, no, knowing the property where you are, I see a lot of for sale for lease signs in there. What's that all about? That was our plan B, where if we weren't granted a license, we couldn't open up as what we wanted to do. So um, as it sits right now, the building's empty, and I'm just throwing my retirement fund into paying for mortgages and taxes and things like that on an empty building. So. If we didn't get a license, then we would sell the building or lease it. And uh, if we were granted a license, we would take the building off the market. Okay. Um, also looking at some of these pictures you sent here, what, what, what age group are you looking at to serve here? 21 to 40. 21. Is there any carding or anything that you do yes, when it'll, people walk in? It'll be just it'll be just like a bar. I, I mean, when they come in, they will have bracelets, um, and they will have to come up to the bar every time and purchase a a beer or wine. Um, we will have bouncers and we will have bartenders. We'll have waitresses, servers. So it'll have a bar bar like atmosphere along with activities to go with it that you're talking about. Right, the bar will be relatively small. Most of it's gonna be food. And the food was what we were looking at here on your sheet? Yeah, I brought a updated version in. I don't know if you have those in front of you. Yes, we do. Um, but we, we solidified what we were gonna use for ovens and things like that, and that's where we got to nail down our, our uh, menu. Okay, all right, thank you. Any live music venue you anticipate? Um, if we have any live music, it's going to be local bands that basically want to play for free. <laughs> Good luck. Well, you know, some, some people just want to play music. And, sure, sure. But I'm, I, I've been a long-tenured businessman here in Ashwaubenon since 2004. Um, 96 is when I opened the business, but... We donate a lot to this community, uh, um, a lot of good causes, um, women's shelters, things like that, where I'm like a father figure as far as, it, you know, as a business is run. Reputation means everything to me. Money doesn't, money's good, but reputation is everything. I move to approve the Class B beer, Class C wine license for Duval Properties LLC doing business as press start rec room i've got one more question i need um, a second i'll, I'll second first i'll second it okay we have a motion and a second okay comment there's a couple of rooms that are vip rooms so th uh, those are walled off from the rest of the yes area yes are are is somebody able from from your business to go in to make sure yeah. things are handled properly yes it'll be, an open, not alcohol? it'll be an open room and there are cameras in every one is, is, do, you, do you plan on having anybody actively yes. walking in? So, you know, you're going to have yes, yes. Know, potential there for somebody bringing right. out. There's minors in there, and obviously you want to know what's... Everything that... Any hiding spots in the place will have cameras and people walking the floor. Okay. 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 Uh, Chief, do you have any issues with this? No issues with it. Um, pretty much from the committee meeting, uh, as far as the business plan and how um, the sales of alcohol and how they're going to go about um, controlling uh, people coming in, um, public safety has no no issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, one thing, and it's probably in here, but I didn't read. What are going to be your hours of operation? Um, I've got them on the list here. Sunday it'll be 
12 to 11, that's family day. That's no alcohol. Okay. Monday through thir Monday, Tuesday, be 4 to 11, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Wednesday, 4 to 2 a.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, be 12 to 2. Okay. So every Sunday is family? Family, no alcohol. That's a good idea. So, I mean, the kids can come, you know, there's going to be teenagers. They still say they have nothing to do. Yeah. So on Saturday from 12 to 6, they can all come in. They can have birthday parties. We're going to have parties. We're going to have sleep-ins with high school kids, too, on certain days, you know, just so. And they can play games all night um, with adult supervision. And then Sunday, 12 to 11, is family days, period. And you come in, and it's soda or food. Okay. And one, one, one quick question to back up uh, Chris here. Ca cameras throughout the building. Fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I see a lot of business have a lot of cameras, and the only time they're monitored is after the troubles happen. You go back and review it and figure it out. We're going to, uh, there's going to be floor walkers that are constantly, because if you serve to a minor, we know the implications. There goes my reputation. One minor gets caught, I'm done. And I will not let that happen. Period. It's not going to happen. I'm not picking you on that question. I understand. But I see a lot of cameras, and they're only monitored after the fact. Right. Okay, good. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> okay, or, we have... or, or if you have any recommendations, I'd certainly mm -hmm. like to hear them. It's your money. Good luck. Do the right thing. You're going to do it. You're going to do it right. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the Class B beer, Class C wine for Duval Properties, LLC, DBA, Press Start, Rec Room. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Okay, six to one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. 11G, action on Class B beer license for Marcus Cinemas of Wisconsin, LLC, DBA, Bay Park Cinema. This item passed committee as well on a 3-2 to two vote. Uh, Marcus Cinemas of Wisconsin, doing business as Bay Park Square, uh, is seeking a Class B beer license. Mr. Rob Novak, Vice President of Concessions, is here to entertain any questions you might have. Good evening. Um, I was at the Public Works and uh, Protection meeting listening to his speech. I'd like for you to tell us about your business again, which uh, was held, uh, at, like I said, the Public Works meeting. Absolutely. I, I think you did a good job at it, but now that we're in a board meeting, I'd like to hear it again. So we all understand. Sure, absolutely. Um, just so everyone understands, obviously Marcus Theater Corporation is now in our 82nd year of operations throughout the Midwest. We've been at the Bay Park Cinema since we built that location in 1996. That location is managed and has been generally managed by Jody Rose, who's here in the audience who accompanied me with today. Um, she has been at the building since we built that property. Marcus Theaters, the theater industry as a whole, has gone through kind of a change and an evolution into what guests want. Uh, we've started that commitment here in Bay Park with the addition of recliner seating, which we put in about two years ago now, because that's one of the directions that movie theaters went. One of the other directions that movie theaters went as we go to protect our market share, and when I say protect our market share, it's both against competitors and against other forms of media as consumers tend to want to watch movies in different ways and consume it, whether it's on their phone, their iPad, at home, streaming, whatever it may be. And one of the demands is that we, from our guests that we've seen, is that we offer a more diverse selection of products at the concession stand or food and beverage. So one of the things we've done is made a commitment throughout the Midwest and the country to start doing that. And some of the things that we've done is add in full service lounges, We've added fresh food service, expanded concessions, and whatnot. Um, in the case of what we're seeking here at Bay Park uh, Cinema is we're looking to be able to serve beer. Um, we may say why we look to do that. I mean, the guests 
that comes in today tends to be a mature guest, and one of the things they ask for us is different selections. We've had theaters that we've put full service bars in. We've had theaters that we've put beer service in the counter. Um, just so everyone's clear, at this point, Marcus Theaters operates 69 theaters throughout the Midwest. We have 44 theaters, which we have some variation of alcohol service at. Um, 25 of them are bars. Six of them are counter service, where we serve draft beer along with fresh food. If you go to our Sheboygan Theater, you would see that. We have other theaters that serve hamburgers. If you go to Appleton at the Valley Grand Cinema, you'll see that they serve beer through that. Um, additionally, we have full service restaurants. And then we have seven theaters, including our Green Bay East Theater, which is um, off the highway that serve just canned beer. And that's our objective here. And <coughs> as part of that, we have a full business plan for how we address serving beer because obviously we understand that this is a family environment and a lot of people say, well, how are you gonna serve beer? How are you gonna police it? How are you gonna monitor it? Um, one of the things we do is we have pretty strict policies with this, I feel. It's a one beer per ID, one beer per person. So no matter how old the guest is, it is our expectation and it is our standard that if you are able to sell the beer of age to sell any alcoholic beverage in any of our locations, you are expected and demanded to ID that individual. No matter if the person looks to be 18 or they look to be 81, it doesn't matter to us. That is our policy. Additionally, going above and beyond that, we have a strict policy at all of our locations because we hire an outside company called the Bars Organization, which comes in and audits our properties. So randomly, not an employee of the Marcus Corporation, but somebody else will come into our location and randomly walk up to one of our associates and try to buy an alcoholic beverage. If that associate does not follow our procedures, which includes carting that person, regardless of age, prior to either ringing in the purchase or attempts to serve the alcoholic beverage prior to um, actually receiving and checking that person's identification, they receive a red card. It is our policy within our organization that if we have someone who receives a red card, we do terminate that person because that is a standard that we hold. And we've had to let go, unfortunately, good employees throughout our company. There's been about, I was just referring to Jody about this, we've had about five employees over the past three to four years who we have a zero tolerance on because we do understand the gravity that comes with getting a liquor license. If you so choose to grant us that, we get that. Because our reputation to stand before you and ask for a liquor license is based off the 44 previous liquor licenses that we've asked for and obtained throughout different Midwestern cities. Because we understand what goes with selling liquor. And I think the other thing to understand is for people that have consternation about alcohol and movie theaters, movie theaters sell alcohol because we have guests who ask for it and whatnot, and they look at it as a form of indulgence. But it's not the same in terms of, when we think of sporting events, in terms of consumption. There's no natural breaks in movie theaters. In, when you watch a movie, we don't have intermissions anymore. So if a gentleman or a lady were to choose to buy a beer at our concession stand, they're probably doing so before the movie. They're, we don't send people inside the auditorium to sell during the movie. There's not times where you have natural breaks to walk out and repurchase alcoholic beverages. It would be your choice. You're going to miss the movie if you choose to do so. So we don't find people who are going in there to overindulge. It's an item that's offered, and some guests elect to do it. I also want people to understand this is not a giant change. We don't see people shifting and saying, oh, all of a sudden that the 50% of people that were buying carbonated beverages, soda pop, and theaters are now buying alcohol. Um, I know when I spoke before you guys last time, I was saying it's about one in 20, and I was just running the numbers based off of our financials to give you an accurate, of our food and beverage revenue, including concessions, we're talking about 7% of the money. So this is not a giant windfall for us. This is not something I'm not, yes, from a capitalistic point of view, we're looking to take it, you know, make money off of this, but it's also extending to the guests to say, hey, this is a convenience. This is a market differentiator. That's why we do it. It's why we did it in Green Bay. It's why we want to do it here in Ashwaubenon. <laughs> I would also add one other thing. It, it is something 
too, that when we look at, you do see other businesses other than movie theaters in this area, um, Chuck E. Cheese and Sir Bounce a lot, which are obviously aimed at children. Those are spaces that have it, that in addition are family environments that also have beer and wine licenses. So it's not just movie theaters that are, you know, offering a variety of drinks. I'm just curious what the uh, the age demographic, how that's changed in the last 10 or 15 years, especially like you referenced before with phones and iPads and in the younger generation, I would imagine, especially it, it takes a big bite out of that. It does. I mean, if you look at the movie going population in the cinemas is aging. It's It's a much more mature audience. I mean... You look at some of our most popular days. I was just over at the theater today, and it's $5 Tuesday. It's a value day. We get a lot of folks that like that. Our Friday Young at Heart special, which we run, it's a senior citizen day. Um, senior citizens and adults, empty nesters, tend to be some of the best moviegoers. Um, if you look at some of the st statistics that have come out um, by the motion picture industry, it, we tend to have an older audience. Now, we welcome young folks. We want young folks. We want to have a family conducive environment, but we're kind of behooven to the movies that come out as well. You know, for every time, it, we're in Oscar season right now, and there's a lot of great movies that are out there, and you just had the Academy Award nominations today, and those movies are aimed at mature audiences and adults, so, you know, we're always, we're always trying to stay ahead of technology and amenities to keep people coming back to our theaters, which are in the community, and keep, give people a place to go. And that's part of the reason for this, because, you know, people ask, well, I want to go somewhere because the competitor has alcohol, or the competitor has more offerings, you know, better seats. It's part of the commitment we've made here to try to make that theater better at Bay Park by when we offered our Dream Lounger recliners and the two super screens and upgraded the sound. That was one of the reasons to do it, keep people coming to the movies. Oh, I, a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that came up. There we go. Sorry. It's okay. Um, one of the only questions I had was, will this hinder, um, <coughs> I guess, kids under the age of 18 getting jobs at the, I know you obviously have No, no, uh, obviously, no, 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 uh, not at all. What it's, it's, we would never, no, we're, fully we need 16 and 17 year olds working for us we need 18 year olds we need i mean the it is very hard to get a lot of people to want to come to work right now because the job market is pretty robust for people to go find employment elsewhere and there's a variety of jobs out there no i mean what does it mean it means that anybody who is of age who can serve will have to we'll have to have somebody on staff at all times whether it's one of the general the general manager jody who's here one of her assistant managers they're gonna have to be properly trained to make sure that they can um that they're fully vetted our system would be if there was a 16 year old working no different because it would be sold out of the concession stand obviously they couldn't complete the transaction if a, a consumer walked up and said i'd like to buy a miller light then at that point they have to stop the transaction no different than at the grocery store you know the grocery stores have cashiers that are under the age that can sell. They just can't complete the transaction. They have to bring somebody of age who's had training to come in to complete that transaction. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak against this? I would need you to come up, though. I, I have. Uh, my name is Lynette Clancy. And I live on LaRue Lane. I, um, I do have a concern because I do drop my teenager off at the theater. And it's still one safe place that you can drop your kids off and you don't have to worry about alcohol being there. You don't have to worry about people drinking and being um, belligerent. And I understand you're like, they're just going to sell one can and they can't go out. But it, it also opens the box where you might sell mid-movie at some point, you know, because that's a, that you're having more yeah, yeah, just of, a, a rev, of a revenue. <laughs> um, it's, um, I think that you will decrease how many jobs you're having for teenagers because you will have kids not 
uh, or parents not want them to be in that situation. Uh, the grocery stores now have the alcohol in a separate area. They don't always go to the, the I mean, I grew up, I worked in a grocery store. Um, I, uh, I just think it opens a Pandora's box and I just don't feel it's something that's needed. I've talked to other parents and, and it's funny because I know uh, you had mentioned, Mark, that you know this has been going on for a year, a lot of these items and stuff like that. I learned about it in the press. And I've talked to neighbors, and I've talked to other people, and, and they're just like, they were surprised. I, I was surprised to know that it's at the east side already. I, you know, I just, I, it, it's, it's surprising to me, I think. So. I, I completely respect and understand that. I mean, I can just tell you from happenstance from the other movie theaters we operate, and based off the amount of associates that we employ at the Marcus Corporation that for that regard, we have not had issues with hiring. We have a robust hiring program and we employ teenagers all the time and we still continue to and it hasn't impacted us. And I would also say with regard to the controlled environment and what goes on in our audit, you know, what goes on in our other theaters that sell alcohol, we have not had problems. And I would stand before you as someone who's gone throughout the Midwest to different city councils no different than this and different communities and stand by that. I mean, we understand when you sell liquor, the onus that's on us is very high to uphold what we're making the covenant with this community, with you as the consumer, with parents to make sure. I have three children of my own. Jody has two children. Mm -hmm. And I understand, you know, what that's like. My children are just seven, five, and three. Mm -hmm. And I understand what that's like, and, but we understand, we want to keep your children coming back. Oh, okay. oh, and we want to appeal, but no different than Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> and Sir Bounce a lot. You know, those are, those are family environments too, and it's our job to make sure that those who come in are monitored, and those who we are selling to are of sound mind. You know, no different than, I will say this, I mean, some of the biggest problems we have in some of our theaters, when it comes to people who come in that we could term belligerent or maybe over, are people who come in off the street who have over consumed and come into our environment. And so no one can come off the street and buy from your environment no, no, that, unless they're. Oh, no, no, you have to be a gay, customer. I, I, you have you to, to buy a, a movie ticket. Well, you'd have to come in because remember, all alcohol will be sold beyond the box office and the ripper stand. I can walk in and buy popcorn for my movie at home. Well, to that respect, <laughs> we're not going to, I guess the difference would be with open container laws, we're not going to be selling a beer. If you were to walk in off the street and say, can I buy a Miller Lite, we wouldn't serve you that beer and then have you walk out the front door with it. Okay. I mean, that's not our, our goal is not to, I mean, pop, movie theater popcorn is a commodity. We look at that as something completely different. Movie theater popcorn is something that's unique that is only made in movie theaters. A, can, it, a bottle of Miller Lite, a can of Miller Lite is something that can be purchased anywhere. The other thing I would bring up is what um, Mr. Paul said, is how are you going to decrease teenage drinking? Because you have the darkness of the theater, you have what? an older individual buy the alcohol so, and in the darkness of the theater now these teenagers are drinking? That's an excellent question. Um, it's something that, number one, we address at all of our other theaters because we never serve soda and beer in the same cup nor vessel. So if you were to buy a soda in any Marcus Theater across the country, it's in a blue cup. In the case of what we would do here, no differently we do at Green Bay East, everything is sold in an aluminum bottle. It's only sold in those vessels. It's not transferred to a paper cup. So as part of the standard operating procedures of our theaters, Jody has staff members who are assigned to walk through those auditoriums. The actual vessel that it's sold in would stick above the cup holder so you can obviously see when they're walking. And as we look to move to recliners throughout the building, you have a much larger spread or what we call um, the risers between the theaters. So when you actually walk in, it's much easier to check as to what a consumer would have. But it's no different than we still send ushers into auditoriums and have for years to make sure people aren't bringing in stuff from the outside. I mean, we, this is, you know, what goes on inside the auditorium 
and doing standard checks those auditoriums as part of our standing operating procedures at all theaters whether we sell alcohol or not. Well thank you for your time. I still right. don't completely agree. <laughs> thank you. Sorry I didn't open the floor there. I for forgot about it. But um, this I have to say before your presentation at Public Works I was immediately against this beer in the movie theater. Then after your presentation I was like well that doesn't I mean it sounds as though you've you've got a good program for checking. I talked with the chief I said do you have a problem with this and he said no. Um, I have clients that I've asked them who are moviegoers a big they go to movies at least twice a week. They thought it would they went to some movie theater in Dallas um, her and her girlfriend bought a bottle of wine and they sat at a table and, and drank the bottle of wine watching the movie and she thought it was a great thing and another client um, they had a bought a pizza and they went into the theater and they had wine and beer and and they liked it. The difference that I see in this is that there there is no food other than your concession stand and that for me makes a big difference because I have gotten calls. I, you know, got a call from Lynette and I got other calls from other people that, as Lynette said, that's one place where we can drop our kids off and we know that there's not alcohol. So I, I can't say that I'm for this yet. So I don't, I don't know how the vote's going to go. I've had communication too and uh, I'm not in favor of this. I'll say that right now. Uh, I got a couple comments here. Uh, I've asked for a list of places that have beer or beer and and wine. Um, <coughs> Chief, directing the question to you, have you had any calls at, I'm assuming you got this list in front of you also, have you got any calls on, uh, let's say, uh, um, oh, I'm looking at the, uh, Chunky cheese is or is a family outing. Uh, uh, that's my first one that comes to my mind. Uh, but any one of these on this list here, have you ever gotten any calls with disturbance because of the alcohol where there are children and adults around? Um, I can't answer that question because I wasn't privy to the list prior to coming to the meeting here tonight. Okay. So I don't want to go on record giving false information. Okay. But it's there's nothing sticking in your head saying yeah it, okay if, if we had if we had an issue what you're suggesting um, we I mean through the work with the clerk's office we'd be dealing with an alcohol issue um, whether it's in violation of selling the minors or if it was call it, causing a disturbance of some court some sort we'd be meeting with the managers of, of those properties okay well that's where I was going back to because if there's a problem in any one of these facilities regardless if it's a full-blown bar or something that is beer or beer and wine. We definitely know it through uh, applying for the license again and looking back at their record. Um, it just seems that alcohol, it, and I'm gonna go back to beer and wine again, there's a lot of places that have it regardless of what their business is. I'm looking at one here, Artful Expressions. I Correct me if I'm wrong, what kind of a menu do they have there? I know it's a place of art. They do. They do have. Yeah, they had to put a know, kitchen in. Yeah, they, well, they put did. in a kitchen. Okay. And now that you said <clears throat> kitchen, I yeah. remember that coming back to you. Yeah. But uh, they they do have some food to some extent. I think popcorn is a great uh, absorber for alcohol. So I I don't, I don't see that as as a real big issue. Although our village does a. Uh, uh, recommend or not recommend but demand having a, a full-blown kitchen so I'm kind of stuck on it too I guess I asked my questions I, I, I voted in favor of this at the uh, committee level um, I think that it's a recreational business in the term of recreation um, I think that the one before this uh, if we don't allow Marcus that we shouldn't allow the one before that uh, because they're both in a similar type of a thing. So, I mean, I, th I don't think we can single Marcus up theater cinema out of, of attaining this. I think that they've got the stop gaps in place to check 
recheck people. Um, it's a rec again. It's recreational. The only thing, Mary, is if you because of food. Right. They don't have a kitchen, so they are to me. They are not. You're comparing apples and oranges um, because they don't have the kitchen. So that's the difference. I would just. How are we defining like food? So I mean, is it percentage of sales or what we serve? No, I would say when I think of the movie theater, uh, it's popcorn and candy. I'm thinking more like pizza and sub sandwiches. And well, I mean, we do sell hot dogs and we do sell pizza and we sell pretzel bites. <laughs> I, I, I just, I want to just, I mean, we do have locations where we open up full on kitchens. Right. But in our sake of what we sell in food, um, I mean, we consider, we have a, the Marcus Corporation has a fairly large food operation. I mean, when you consider what we sold last year, um, it was 10 times the amount of alcohol we sold, which included hot dogs, pretzels, pizza, and at, right down at the Bay Park. I mean, I just walked in there today. She had 45 hot dogs on the grill because we sell $2 hot dogs every Tuesday as part of our $5 Tuesday program. Um, we do have a three compartment sink and are bound by the same health department stand standards that many of the other businesses in Ashwaubenon are bound by. So, I mean, I guess I, I just, in regards for applying for this license, I didn't, with the contingency of food, I didn't know what was tied to that. I know in the Class C wine license, there is a contingency of sales to that license. We did not apply for that because at this present time, we have not, you know, decided to build a full on kitchen. But I would not say that would down the road, down the road that we would not come back and do that like we've done at many other theaters as we look to continue to upgrade amenities at this one. If I may, Madam President, as a point of clarification, as uh, it was alluded to, this kitchen, before the law change, it'll be two years this coming March uh, 30th when the governor signed into uh, law some changes in, in state statute in 125. And one of those things is for the artful expressions as it was alluded to, at that time, you had a 51% of your sales in food, and they had to uh, put in a full-service kitchen. Right. That law has since changed. Now it's it's to uh, the wishes of the governing body. That 51% right. element it no longer exists. Right, but the full kitchen is where what I'm looking at is the kitchen. So I'll make a motion that we approve the Class B beer license for Marcus Cinemas of Wisconsin LLC GBA. Bay Park Cinema. I'll, oh. I'll second. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the Class B beer license for Marcus Cinemas of Wisconsin LLC. Well, on, on the question, I, I too voted f in favor at the committee. And you make a great presentation. You're a good representative for your for your business. You really are. I mean that sincerely. But boy, I tell you what, this young lady here said, it struck me that this is a place, and at this moment, I don't know how I'm gonna vote on this. I'll, I'll be very candid with you. I don't know if I can go up or down on it, but she said something that really struck me. We can drop our kids off there <coughs> and be relatively secure, at least from this point of view. Boy, that hit me like a ton of bricks. So, but I know you're taking all kinds of precautions. I understand that, and that's, that's good for you. But I, I just, this, this one just gives me some trouble. I'll tell you, if it, if it passes, and again, I don't, at this moment, I can't tell you if I'm going up or down, but if it passes, I just hope the heck that, that it works in the sense that, that young kids don't get into it and, and uh, you seem to be having success at the other places where you've, where you've done this, but if, if it passes, uh, because if, it, if there's some trouble, if there's trouble, you know better than anyone that there's going to be, pardon the expression, hell to pay. And so we, we just will be watching very closely. I completely agree, and I would add this, that we understand the steps. I mean, again, we know that our ability to go before the next city council lies in our ability to uphold what I'm agreeing to here. And we all look at movie theaters as sacred places for entertainment. And whether that's alcohol or public safety or security, we've taken steps throughout time to make sure we ensure that. Um, parents 
look to movie theaters as somewhere they can drop off. But it's our job to uphold it. I know we look at alcohol as an evil in some ways or in some way encroaching on that. But just like we've taken steps in other ways, as when movie theaters have been looked at as areas that were once sacred and have different things have happened, acts of violence, we've taken immediate steps. I mean, I'll just I'll, I'll say this to you, and I, I, it's not the same thing, so please don't ever think I'm drawing the parallel. But after Littleton, Colorado happened in 2012, that rocked us as an industry. And that took away the safety and sanity that a lot of people looked at going to movie theaters with, right? And we as a corporation made a strong commitment to putting door alarms in, and we have a strong, stringent policy where we have corporate office people like myself and we have a security personnel that go around and check our door alarms. And you can ask Jody and she could stand here. They're forced to wear pagers on their person at all times because of what happened that night that took away safety and security. Not every movie theater company goes along with this. Cinemark, who was the victim of that night, doesn't go along with this. That's one example. And that's why I point out the, the steps we've taken with the alcohol. And I agree with you. If there is something that were to go wrong in the steps that we said here, I'd be the first one to stand before you and say, it's on us. We owe it. But we owe it from a public safety standpoint to uphold those covenants. And that's how, the, that's how committed the Marcus Corporation is to it. We're not somebody who's going away tomorrow. 82 years, 26 years at the Bay Park, you know, we're committed to that. And we're committed to all the communities that we want to be in. We're committed to those families. We hire, you know, the young children of this community to work in our place. I mean, I was someone who served in the field for many years. And I sat across the desk and from 16 and 17 year olds to try to make a positive impression on them. And I also took those, those, those individuals in no different than Jody does and looks at their parents and says, listen, I want to get your child off to a good start. An understanding that many of these children who elect to work for us were once customers of ours who developed a love for the movie theater. And they want to return that and stay with it and work through high school. Maybe they go away to college and come home. We get that. We're not do this isn't just a cash grab or a money grab. We are, again, we are committed to the village of Ashwaubenon, no different than we're committed to Green Bay, Appleton, Sockville, Cedar Creek, and all those places. So okay, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm going to call the question. Um, Thank you. Okay, just a minute. We might have to open the floor. Did you want to make a comment? She would like to make a comment. Call the question. Call. Oh. Well, she's been waiting here. That, that's her. I'll withdraw my, my motion. Okay. That's fine. She's been waiting here a long time. Okay. Matt, could you use the microphone? Yeah. I can't hear you. I'm getting old. And name and address. Name please. and address, please. I'm Shanta Velasami. Uh, I recently moved to Ashwabidan. Do you want my address? Yes, please. Uh, 1475 Limerick Court. I agree with uh, the previous comment. I won't be comfortable, you know, to take my kids when they serve the beer or alcohol in the movie theater. Without, you know, introducing issues, we don't have to find a solution. So if we are, say, for example, my son go to movie theater, I don't know. He won't buy it, but he's watching others, you know. I'm just introducing the, okay, you can drink like that. I don't want to that happen, you know, if I go to movie theater. That's my, my own perspective, you know, my personal comment on it. So... Okay. i go one last thing. Thank you. Real quick, Mary. If Chuck E. Cheese and Sir Bonsalot didn't serve it, I would be voting a different way. But there, I think they're in the end, and Press Start Rex. I mean, it's, I think they're all similar type of uh, venues uh, for kids and adults and, and families. Um, and we're in that tricky little thing. Um, I'm sitting here and she lives three doors from me. So I mean, she, I know that it's a direct route. Uh, my vote is right now against what she's saying. I get that, but you know what? That's, you know, I, I, I gotta go by what's past practice, what we have on our books and everything. 
And I just, I can't see not allowing it. Well, could I, could I make a comment? Sure. Um, so I am new to the board, um, lived in Midland, Texas for about a year and a half after college. And I went to a movie theater down there where I was shocked when I walked in. Not only was there like a ropes course for little kids actually above your head. So kids are on harnesses and <coughs> ropes and, you know, light up area. Um, they saw, served alcohol and it was the first time I had ever been to a theater where they had a full service um, kitchens and alcohol and not only was I shocked that they served alcohol I was also shocked that they served buckets of beer and pitchers of margaritas <laughs> so I didn't see an issue there it was a no granted it's a different type of situation where they had an arcade they had a ropes course for little kids and they also right next to it had that um, had I not been exposed to that prior, I, I might end up voting differently, um, but I never experienced any issues at that theater, and I ended up going back multiple times. Um, and they did have pretty strict, um, I, I guess just saying, having being predisposed to it and seeing that it didn't cause many issues, um, it's, I don't know. It, 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 it does happen in other places, like you said, not only just here in Wisconsin, but throughout the nation, and on a fully different scale than what he's talking about. So um, it's just something that I've experienced myself and was, like I said, shocked at first, but then also shocked at the precautions they took to keep those issues um, handled. So. I think, and, and, and is it Lynette? Yes. I bring up really valid points, and especially the one that um, it's one of the few places now that, that you can bring your kids to alcohol-free environments. And I struggle with this a little bit. However, I think the, the presence of the, of, 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 of the way they're going to sell the beer um, and, and just the footprint and the presence of, of the, the minimal presence of it, I think is going to be it does not override for me to allow them to do something like this and, and actually for a, a segment of the population that's probably going to enjoy it and, it and it's really not going to impact in my opinion somebody sending their kids into the into the business compared to going into a place that's going to sell buckets of beer and pitchers of beer which that's happening you know place downtown do years ago and you know with the one cup for one person I just it's not going to have a big impact, I don't think, on people bringing their kids in. You know, in our neighboring community of De Pere, they got a theater there and they sell, I know they sell beer there. Uh, I have never heard of any problems with it. It's still, a, that, that started a long time ago and it's, from what I'm understanding, it's still going yet today. So I agree with, it's, it's not their major income, it's a low impact to to it, but I gotta agree with Annette. Annette, it's hard to go anywhere where you don't have alcohol. Uh, look at the picnics, you know. Every, the village itself has a, a picnic, the uh, Schwaben and Blast, and there, there's beer there, so it, it's hard to find those places. And society has changed a lot, do I agree with it? Uh, it can be questionable, but I think. Uh, I, I I don't know. I like your presentation. I think you did a great job. I think uh, I, I've got to trust in your sincerity and say we will police it very well. And we've got our clerk there saying you won't have a license if you're going to not abide by our rules. Okay. Part, of, part of my reason for not supporting this is because we have one of these facilities in the area already 
this gives the customer base, your customer base, an option either to utilize uh, one, one of your facilities that serves alcohol and it gives the customers on the other side an opportunity for an alcohol-free setting. Okay. Any more questions, comments? Roll call, please. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Allison Williams. In favor. So, yeah. That would be aye. Yeah, aye. <laughs> Trustee Paul. Yes. Trustee Zerbel. <clears throat> yes. Trustee Mark Williams. Yes. Trustee Bukowski. No. Trustee Melcheski. No. President Kardoski. No. Uh, four ayes. The Three. resolution passes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 11H, <coughs> discussion and possible action on ordinance 12-1-17 relating to alcohol licensing distance requirements. Well, Madam Chair, I'd like to, uh, in behalf of the PAC, I've had discussions with uh, our school superintendent and the manager of the PAC and, and uh, Lisa Marth, who is the chair of the advisory, the PAC advisory board, and I would ask that this matter be withdrawn. I don't want to table it. I, I would just have, rather have it withdrawn for the time being. And um, there's a number of reasons why Lisa and her group are going to take a, a, some time and look at other similarly situated facilities in the state. Apparently there are others who are either attached to or very close to schools. And they're gonna take a look at that. And, and uh, Kate is then going to, our, our PAC manager is going to, over time, take a look and see what effect this has. And we have a new school superintendent coming in June. So there are a number of reasons to just hold it off. And I suspect it'll come back someday, um, maybe in a not too distant future, but I'd, I'd just ask that it be, <coughs> that the request be withdrawn in their behalf right now. Okay, do we have to have a motion to withdraw that or just? I'll make, I, yeah, well, let's make it, let's make it for I'll make a motion to withdraw this item from the agenda. Is that all right, Tony? Is that a, is that proper or what? Or receive in place on file. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah, receive in place on file. There you go. Thank you. I'll make a motion to receive in place on file item 11H. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to receive in place on file item 11H. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 11I, action on resolution number R1-2-18, disallowance of claim, Mr. Kevin Burmeister. Uh, Mr. Burmeister seeks reimbursement by the village for a damage claim to his vehicle as he uh, claims as caused by the village. A uh, little background, it is in your uh, packet. Uh, allegedly a village snow plow struck a water inspection head causing pieces to strike his vehicle and our insurer uh, denied the claim, or recommends denying the claim, rather. It's been recommended by them to deny it, so. How do you, how, I mean, if we dim, if we hit something and it hits another, re hit something, how can we deny that? <laughs> that was my question exactly. It, it's not something you have uh, forewarning of that potentially happening. I mean, any it's it's no different than any vehicle flings a rock and something so if happens. So if a snowplow hits a mailbox. That's different. You're not supposed to be hitting a mailbox unless, of course, the mailbox is dangling into the road, and then that's a different case. But if it hits a water main that's in the street that we maintain, and it something comes off of it and it hits this car, you're saying that it's not if it hit a hit a construction barrel and it hit his car would we be in, responsible depends on where the construction barrel is i, I mean i don't mean to be it's, it's not about and it's a very unfortunate situation but it depends on where it is like if we had noticed that the water main somebody complained about it six times it's and an we never did anything about but it but i don't can't understand yeah. why they can't why they don't pay for it but wasn't because the water then main, we would was it? have to cover all sorts of things that just It was happened. just a cover, right? Wasn't it a, a small cover? Correct. It's actually a portion of it that 
came off or portions of it and yeah. it just happened you know sometimes they heave and unanticipated right. and right. Yeah, then it's unanticipated that's it's happened. an accident it's something that happens right. what let, let me mark you, yeah. you you're in this business what happens and i'm not being a wise guy here what happens if i'm driving by same guy same gentleman and i hit a rock in in uh in the road and phew, it goes and, and hits a car and does the same damage what it, Here's your insurance company to pay for it well okay let's have another scenario I have a crack in my windshield, and I say it came off a of Ken's car going down Highway 41. Is he, he responsible? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do I pr how do I You're prove that he? You get a license number. How do I prove that? I've that, had I've had uh, stuff come off of vehicles that are are dump trucks, and it comes off and it hits people's cars, and that that tote, that dump truck driver is responsible for his load. That's a different situation. The contents of your vehicle are expected to be secure. There's requirements in terms of covering it. Yeah, I would agree things. with that. I would That's agree with different that. than there happens to be something in the road that gets kicked up by a vehicle. Okay, so if I'm cutting my grass and I hit a rock and it gets <laughs> thrown and Truly. hits something. Or, or We've oh. had that happen too. Okay, so <laughs> is that covered? Um, generally not unless we were doing something the, the difference is are you doing something that was negligent did you have notice of a problem and did you fail to take care of it and that's not right did you I have guess. a duty of or standard of care in that respect and, and just to add on to that I mean that's it's notice of a dangerous type of condition and we didn't do anything about it and s things happen and also the law provides governments immunity for those sorts of actions as well. So that's another basis in which uh, the recommended denial came through from our insurance company. I asked kind those of same questions, Mark. <laughs> I think there's a, a, a sympathy that we all feel for, for the individual. I think it's the volume of things that we would be responsible for and where would that, where would that stop and then what situation, if you don't follow what the insurance recommendation is, then you need to set up some other guideline for you in terms of when you're going to say no, when you're going to say yes. And if you're going to say yes, Katie, bar the door. <laughs> well, I agree with some of the things that were said, but I also agree that we weren't negligent. I don't think we were negligent. We're plowing snow out there, and we're not negligent. So I'll move to approve the uh, <laughs> disallowance of claim. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the disallowance of claim. Hold I'll on. Hold on. Uh, uh, discussion. Uh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, uh. I don't know. I, I just sometimes doing the right thing is not doing what the right thing that the insurance company always tells you to do. <laughs> oh, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know that. And I hate to think that we would, uh, if we accidentally hit something and accidentally threw it up in a guy's car and dented it or did whatever to it, now his insurance company's got to report the claims and his insurance is going to go up. I'm not in favor of that. I'm not, I think that's something that we should be taking care of. I don't care if we have to do it internally and not file a claim or whatever because I can't imagine it's that high. I know you're not going to believe the story, <laughs> but it <laughs> happened to me once. They were plowing a lot, and he hit the same object and creamed out my wife's windshield, mirror, scuffed up some paint. It happened on a private lot, though, and they immediately hauled the car away and took care of it, and that was the end of it, with no question. Who paid it? They did. Who? Never asked, they just took care of it. That was it, the end of it. I mean, yes, it was an accident. It wasn't done on purpose, right. but that thing was sticking up enough for the blade to catch it and throw it, and it just happened there, sat the car. I wonder if that piece, and that piece is not a very small piece, I wonder if that hit a person. Yeah. The same thing though we're not I, I understand what you're saying god bless you yeah. I, that's the first thought i had when i read I, this but it's not legally negligence we're not negligent well, he didn't see it there negligence. and hit it on purpose and, and i mean you, 
Well, it's you're going to hit a lot of things when you're plowing snow, and that's our responsibility is to go out and plow snow. They can't worry about every little thing that's going to happen out there. Otherwise, you won't get any snow plows. The, the question that I had, I, I went through all these questions, too, to everybody. Um, the questions that I would have, if we start allowing this and going against what our, our insurance company recommends, do you open the floodgates? That's my main concern. No, that's that's, that's, that's what question. you need to know. And that's where my husband and I had the conversation um, where um, he driving down the road and a stone flew up from somewhere and cracked his windshield. And so say six miles down the road, he was behind a truck and he said, well, a stone just flew up and hit my windshield. How? You can't prove that. You know, it wasn't an on purpose thing. You just, so, anyway. I'm not against this gentleman being made whole against. You know, and Mark's got a really valid point before. You know, if there's some other way we can take care of this, but if, if like Allison said, we open this can yep. of worms. You like open. Now. And they will keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So. Okay. Okay. So here we go. We have a motion and a second to um, adopt resolution number R1-2-18, disallowance of claim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. 11J, <laughs> review and action regarding cool. Cormier Road sewer and water reconstruction contract. Doug. This project, if you remember, uh, started back in 2015 when we received a <gasps> SDP urban grant for the reconstruction of the roadway on Cormier Road between Oneida and Ashland. Uh, that's a, a three-year process when you get one of these grants in terms of designing the roadway and getting it out to bid and then construction. <coughs> you follow the previous year with the utility construction. So that's what's happening. 2019 is when the road actually gets reconstructed. This year is when the water and sewer main will be uh, relayed, and that's what this contract is in in regards to. Uh, worked with Ayers Associates. Craig Shue is here from Ayers. Uh, you'll be seeing his smiling face uh, at a number of meetings here in the future because they'll be doing some work on Mike McCarthy Way. Uh, but finished the design work this fall and early winter. Put it out to bids. Received bids in January. Uh, we had 11 pre-qualified contractors. We had just about every contractor in the area bid, and we had everybody turn in bids. Uh, ranging from just over 1.1 million to just over 1.7 million. Uh, the low bid being crew check construction at uh, $1,177,777.77. That's a little calling card of his company. He does that type of number in each of his bids. So uh, we've worked with crew check construction in the past, uh, most recently on our transmission main project that went down Morris Avenue to the Marvell Tower back in 2005. Uh, don't have any uh, questions or concerns at this point. The one item I do have to clarify is the road construction por portion of this project is funded by TIF 3. The utility reconstruction portion is funded by the respective utility. So the sewer and water utility will, will be paying for these portions uh, of the construction. We'll be looking at getting construction started here probably in April, March, if all of a sudden it would hit 80 degrees. I don't think that's going to be happening this go around. Uh, we'll be having a public informational meeting coming up in February or March once we have the contractor, uh, have the contract set, have a schedule in place. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll take any questions or you have our recommendation for approval. Well, I don't think there's no denying that Doug did a good job. I'll move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to Award the bid for the water and sewer reconstruction on Cormier to Kruchek Construction in $1,177,777.77. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. 11 you sure you want to say something, Greg? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Your chance. 11K, discussion and possible action on a quote for aerial lift truck. Tim. 
In the um, 2018 budget, we had money allocated for the replacement of our 1998 aerial lift truck. Uh, the budgeted amount was 185,000. We sent um, bid quotes to respective um, either manufacturers or vendors um, throughout the country for their consideration. And we did get two bids back that um, were from a local bidder, Utility Sales and Service, out of Little Shoot. And the, the two bids were actually identical except for the chassis that they were going to provide to that vehicle. Uh, we, working with Spencer, our, our mechanic in the garage, um, he recommended and we specified a 9 liter Cummings diesel engine in that vehicle. Uh, we did get one bid with a 6.7 liter Cummings diesel engine in it, which um, did not meet the specifications that we had set forth. Um, so the Freightliner um, bid with a 9 liter Cummings diesel engine was the, was the bidder um, that was qualified for that. Um, their bid came in slightly over budget at 189. 421. And speaking with the um, the vendor from the the, the company, um, they had a, a greater than expected price increase in steel. Um, we did have a, a certain amount of price increase allocated to the new year, as well as the ma chassis manufacturer had a, a price increase greater than what they were anticipating. The good news is we did bid it out early in the year. They were able to hold the prices on the aerial portion of it. Um, from their vendor, which was obviously good news. Um, the, the one thing that we did, we, we went to different communities and kind of looked at what they have for, for vehicles. Um, with the city of Appleton, their public works department, they have two similar vehicles in their fleet. Uh, the one thing that we did not put in our original price quote was a, an LED arrow board on the back of the vehicles. And they do all the Christmas decorations on College Avenue. Um, they hang them from one corner to the other, and stuff is suspended, and it's, it's pretty neat. But they have a, an LED aero board on the back of that vehicle. And um, I posed the question to, um, to leave our operations supervisor, and he would absolutely love that idea because that's going to help him with his manpower and equipment, basically minimizing one extra vehicle and an operator driving that vehicle when they work on those busy streets. Um, hanging Christmas lights or flags or whatever decorations we have out there. So you did get that? Yeah. That is included in that bid price, okay. yes. I, you know, Tim, I, I was just talking about this today, that uh, it's, tough to, it's tough to speculate a year from now what something's going to cost. So our department heads and, and staff in the departments always do a good job, but this is one of those that just didn't come in this where we wanted it to be and the cost of everything going up so quickly right now um, with all the building going on um, I think I think you hit pretty close to what what we needed so move to approve the choice suggested by staff uh, I'll second that on the question did I say and I'm not Disagreeing with you. Did I hear you say you're going to eliminate an extra vehicle, uh, eliminate a vehicle by putting up these decorations? No, it would be during the operations of putting them up and taking them down. We um, run a chase vehicle behind yeah. our current bucket truck yeah. Yeah. as a safety precaution with a large aero board right. directing people out of that lane of traffic. Yeah. Um, so by adding this $800 directional aero board, we can eliminate a pickup truck, the aero board, as well as an additional personnel to do that operation. Okay, I like you. I like what I heard because I thought there was an awful lot of people <laughs> putting up decorations <laughs> for what was needed, so good choice. You could have volunteered, you know. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the bucket truck expenditure for $189,645. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 11L, possible action on Canterbury Park shelter bid. Allison. It's going to be me. Unfortunately, Rex um, went home sick today. So um, oh. we're all on flu alert here. Um, so he did a park shelter bid for Canterbury Park. 
if this is just the shelter, he would, um, sometimes we've subcontracted some things out um, in terms of the actual erection and that, that would be the remaining dollars in terms of what he had budgeted. Um, but the low bid was from commercial recreation for $23,436.08. And don't ask me anything else because I probably this, don't. This know went it. through Park Board uh, last week or the week before, and everything. The only di difference in it is that uh, um, we have polygon structures and other parks. That was the only other discussion that we had. It's only uh, a slight seven hundred dollar, three hundred dollar difference between these. I can't remember now. It's something like that. Three hundred, I believe, roughly. So. That was the only uh, discussion we had about it. If we wanted to stick with the same structures, right? Or we just went with a low bid on it as the recommendation from Park Board. Rex was real comfortable working with these guys. Yeah, he, he didn't have any issues, or doesn't think, doesn't think he'll have any issues. What wasn't that going to be two feet shorter than the ones they normally buy? The park only accommodates the shorter one. That's why he, he recommended right, it. Right, right, right. I read that. Okay. The structure would be similar to what we have at Waterford Park and Sand Acres Park. Those are 26-foot structures. Uh, the one that we're proposing for Canterbury will be a 24-foot. Um, very similar in design, um, although from a different manufacturer. I'll make a motion that we approve the bid for Canterbury Park Shelter for Commercial Recreation, 23436 Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the Mr. structure Park. for Maybe Canterbury first. Park from Commercial Recreation for 23436 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> Anything for next agenda? Oh. That's correct. Anything for next agenda? Or call village staff. I'll move to go to closed session. Dur during the meeting, the village board of the village of Ashwaubenon may convene in a closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 1985 sub 1E for the purpose of A, update and possible action and development projects related to Holmgren Way and Mike McCarthy Way in tax incremental district numbers three and five for competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. And B, discussion <coughs> regarding potential development on Ridge Road where competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. The village board may thereafter reconvene into open session pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 1985 sub 2 to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. I'll move to go to closed session. Second. Motion and a second to go into closed session. Roll call. Vote. Trustee Allison Williams. Yes. Trustee Paul. Yep. Trustee Zerbel. Yes. Trustee Mark Williams. Yes. Trustee Bukowski. Aye. Trustee Melcheski. Yes. President Kardoski. Yes. We are in closed session. <laughs>